Hello students, in our previous class, we have solved up to exercise 1.2. So in this session, we are going to solve some of the questions from exercise 1.3. Exercise 1.3, question number one, write the following in decimal form and say what kind of decimal expansion it has. Exercise 1.3, question number one, Roman number one, 36 by 100. So, after converting 36 by 100 into decimal, we will get 0 0.36. Here the decimal is terminating, that is, after division, we will, uh, at a certain stage, we will get 0 as the remainder. So, this type of decimal expansion is termed as terminating. So, the decimal expansion of this 36 by 100 is terminating decimal next exercise 1.3 question number 1 Roman number 2 1 by 11 after converting this number into decimal we will get 0 0.09 block that is the decimal expansion of this number is 0 0.09 bar which means here the repeating block is 0 0.9 that is after the decimal the digit 0 9 gets repeated again and again so such type of decimal expansion is non-terminating repeating decimal so 1 by 11 will be a non-terminating Non terminating repeating decimal expansion. Next, from one over four, three by thirteen. After converting three by thirteen into decimal, we will get zero point two three zero seven six nine bar as is decimal expansion. So, in this Decimal expansion, you can see the repeating block is 230769. So, such type of decimal expansion will be then terminating repeating decimal. Exercise 1.3, question number you know that 1 by 7 equal to 0 0.142857 bar that is the decimal is non-terminating repeating decimal can you predict what the decimal expansion of 2 by 7 3 by 7 4 by 7 5 by 7 6 by 7 are without actually doing the long division if so how here you have to find the value of 2 by 7 3 by 7, 4 by 7, 5 by 7, and 6 by 7 without doing the actual division by using the given information 1 by 7 equal to 0 0.142857. So, how we are going to find this value? Let us see. So, question number 2 solution. The given information is 1 by 7 equal to 0 0.142857 bar. So here the repeating block is 142857. So we are to find the value of 2 by 7, 3 by 7, 4 by 7, 5 by 7, and 6 by 7. So, coming to one, uh, 2 by 7, here we can write 2 by 7 as 2 into 1 by 7. So, we know that 1 by 7 is equal to 0 0.142857 bar. So, multiplying this value by 2, we will get 0 
2857144 bar. So here is all the repeating block will be 285714. So likewise we have to find the value of 3 by 7. So 3 by 7 can be written as 3 into 1 by 7 which is equal to 3 into the given value of 1 by 7 is 0 0.1428. Now, simply we are going to multiply this value by 3 and we will get the value of 3 by 7 without doing actual division method. So this will come as 0 0.428571 bar. Same, we can write 4 by 7 as 4 into 1 by 7 equal to 4 into 0 0.142857 bar which will become 0 0.571428 bar same here 5 by 7 can be written as 5 into 1 by 7 equal to 5 into the value of 1 by 7 is 0 0.142857 now it becomes 0 0.714285 which is the value of 5 by 7 and the last one is 6 by 7 so 6 by 7 can be written as 6 into 1 by 7 equal to 6 into 0 0.142857 bar here also bar equal to this is equal to 0 0.857142 so here we have found out the value of 2 by 7 3 by 7 4 by 7 5 by 7 and 6 by 7 without doing actual long division by using the information provided as 1 by 7 equal to 0 0.142857 next exercise 1.3 question number 3 express the following in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 from our number 1 0 0.6 bar so here we are given a decimal expansion which is non-terminating re repeating decimals and we are to convert this decimal into a number which is in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 for this let us assume this number which is 0 0.6 bar is equal to x so, uh, therefore solution let x equal to 0 0.666 now what we are going to do is we will multiply both sides of this equation by 10 why 10 because here in this decimal expansion the repeating digit is 1 that is the number 6 is repeated again and again if suppose in a decimal expansion if the repeating digit is of 2 like this then we are going to multiply both sides of that equation by 100 and so on so for this type of equation here we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by 10 so now after multiplying both sides of this equation by 10 we will get 10x on the left hand side and 6.6666 on the right hand side next imply 10x equal to 6.666 can be written as 6 plus 0 0.6666 dot 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 such that this number becomes our x therefore this implies 10x equal to 
six plus x equals zero point six 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 is equal to x. Then after this we will solve this equation. So ten x minus x. I will transpose this x to the left hand side equal to six. This implies nine x equal to six implies x equal to six by nine after reducing we will get two by three so the number the given number zero point six bar is converted into a number two by three in the form which is in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to zero therefore the required number is therefore 0 0.6 bar is equal to 2 by 3. Next exercise 1.3 question number 4 express 0 0.99999 dot 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 in the form p by q. Are you surprised by your answer? With your teacher and classmate discuss why the answer makes sense. This is 1.3 question number 4 solution let x equal to 0 0.99999 total. Then here we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by 10. Here also the repeating digit is 1. So after multiplying by 10, we will get 10x on the left hand side and 9.999999 dot 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 on the right hand side. Implies 10x equal to this number can be written as 9 plus 0 0.99999 dot dot dot. Implies 10x equal to 9 plus here this particular number is equal to x so we will replace this number by x now we will solve this equation so 10x minus x equal to 9 implies x equal to 9x equal to 9 implies x equal to 9 by 9 9 by 9, therefore x equal to implies x equal to 1. Here we get the number 1 as our answer for the number for the given number 0 0.9999. So uh, the second part of the question asks says, uh, Are you surprised by your answer? Here the answer is not surprising because as you can see the given number 0 0.9999 is very very much close to 1 so we are expecting this 1 as our answer so you can write since 0 0.9999 dot 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 is very close to one we are not surprised by our we are not surprised by our answer next exercise one point three question number five what can the maximum number of digits be in the repeating block of digit in the decimal expansion of 1 by 17? Perform the division to check your answer. Number 5. Solution. Let us first find the decimal expansion of 1 by 17 by actual division. You can do the actual division at your home. So after uh, finding out the, the decimal expansion of 1 by 17, we get 0 0.5, 0 
as the decimal bar as the decimal expansion of 1 by 17 so here we're repeating blow is 0 5 so the repeating block uh, repeating blow has how many digits let us count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the repeating block has 16 digits. Next, exercise 1.3, question number 6. Look at several examples of rational numbers in the form P by Q, where Q not equal to 0, where P and Q are integers with no common factors other than 1 and having terminating decimal representations. Can you guess what property Q must satisfy? To answer question number 6, let us take up 4 numbers. 2 by 5, 3 by 2, 7 by 8, and 7 by 10 as our example. So, 2 by 5, after converting into decimal, we will get 0 0.4. 3 by 2 after converting into decimal, we will get 1 by 5 and 7 by 8 equal to 0 0.875 and 7 by 10 of course it is equal to 0 0.7. So here the question asks you to find, uh, find the property which satisfy the condition of Q. That is, uh, the denominator, the number denominator, Q. So we are to find the property which satisfies the property of Q, that is denominator. So let us uh, first consider the number 2 by 5. So we have taken the number 2 by 5 which is in the form of P by Q and Q not equal to 0. Likewise the other numbers 3 by 2, 7 by 8 and 7 by 10 are numbers which are in the form P by Q and Q not equal to 0 and there is no common factor between the numerator and denominator other than 1. So after converting uh, these numbers into their respective decimals, we get terminating decimals which the question asks you to take up such numbers. So as you can see, uh, of the denominator of these numbers are either in the power of 2 or in the power of 5. There is the denominator 5 is in the power of 5 and denominator 2 is in the power of 2 and here also the denominator 8 after their prime factorization we will get the uh, 8s 2 q and the denominator 10 s 2 to the power 1 into 5 to the power 1. So, observing all this, we can conclude that the denominator are in the form of to the uh, power of 2, either 2 or 5 or both. Either 2 or 5 or both. So, the property which satisfies the condition of the denominator Q is they are all in uh, in the power of 2 or 5 or both. So we can write all the denominators are in the power of power of either 2 or 5 or both. Next exercise 1.3 question number 8. Find three different irrational numbers between the rational numbers 5 by 7 and 9 by 11. So here we are to find three irrational numbers between the 
two given rational numbers so one must remember that uh, there are infinite infinite numbers of uh, irrational numbers between any two given rational numbers to find these th three different uh, irrational numbers let us first convert the given rational number into their respective decimal expansion so 5 by 7 after decimal expansion you will get uh, as 0 0.7142 8 5 but that is the repeated flow is 7 1 4 2 8 5 and 9 by 11 equals to 0 0.81 bar repeating block is 8 1 so we are going to insert three different irrational numbers between these two decimal expansion so, therefore the required three irrational numbers are numbers are zero point seven five zero seven five zero zero seven five zero 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 dot 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 and zero point Seven six zero seven six zero zero seven six zero 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 the zero point eight zero eight zero 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 eight zero 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 the zero you can write your own uh, different irrational numbers exercise 1.3 question number 9 classify the following numbers as rational or irrational numbers so in question number 9 you are given some numbers and you are to identify if the given numbers are rational or irrational so in Roman number 1 root 23 root 23 is an irrational number it is an irrational number and Roman number 2, root 225. Here we have to uh, we have to observe that the number 225 is a perfect square. So root 225 is equal to 15. Uh, so 15 is not an irrational number. So this root 225 will be a rational number. And the uh, n next from our number 3 0 0.3796 here decimal expansion is terminating so if the decimal expansion is a terminating one the number is a rational number and moving on to uh, next number Roman number 4 7.478478 dot 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 here uh, you can observe that the uh, number 478 it is repeated again and again so this type of decimal expansion is uh, non-terminating repeating decimal so for a rational number the decimal expansions are either terminating or non-terminating repeating decimal so uh, roman number four will be a rational number next roman number five uh, in roman number five the decimal expansion is non-terminating non-repeating decimal so this will be an irrational number so uh, roman number one and roman number five are irrational numbers and the rest are rational number Exercise 1.4 question number one visualize 3.765 on the number line using successive magnification. So here we are to represent the number 3.765 on the number line using successive magnification. For this, let us first draw the number line. So the number we all know that the number 3.765 will lie between 3 and 4. So now the number 3.765 will lie between 3 
and 4. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to magnify the interval between 3 and 4. So, let us draw a number line representing the number between 3 and 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 3, then it will come 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.9 then 4 so as you can see the number 3.765 will lie between the number 3 and 4 and again the number 3.765 will lie between the number 3.7 and 3.8 so the number 3.765 will lie between the number 3.7 and 3.8 8. So after the magnification of the interval between 3 and 4, we represent that, num uh, that interval on a number line. So we are to locate this number 3.765 on, on this number line. So the number 3.765 will be somewhere above between these two intervals. So we will mark this interval such that uh, it represents the number 3.765 then after this we are going to again magnify the interval between 3.7 and 3.8 so for that let us again draw a number line And mark as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so we are considering the interval 3.7 and 3.8. So 3.7, 3.71, 3.8. 3.74, and 3.8. So again, we observe that this number 3.765, 65 will lie somewhere between 3.76 and 3.77 uh, somewhere here let me mark here the number 3.765 next again let us expand this interval um, between 3.76 and 3.77 so now let us again consider the uh, magnification of the interval between 3.76 and 3.77 so for that let us draw a number line representing the interval between 3.76 and 3.77 so uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this will be our three point seven six, three point seven six one, three point seven six two, three point seven six three, three point seven six four. 3.765 and 3.766 so the number 3.76 lies here
so this will represent the number 3.765 so the this whole process of uh, magnifying the number line and representing the number 3.765 is known as successive magnification next so our topic is operations on real numbers we all know that real numbers are matter of rational and irrational numbers so here we will consider operation between two rational number two irrational number and with rational and irrational numbers so in our earlier classes we have studied operations on rational numbers so if we add subtract multiply or divide two rational numbers we will get a rational number but what about the operations between two irrational number uh, when we add subtract multiply or divide two irrational number either we will get a rational number or irrational number so for example if we uh, add two irrational numbers such as root 6 plus root 6 we get 2 root 6 and if we add root 6 with minus root 6 we get 0 as the sum in this case in the first case 2 root 6 is an ir irrational number and in the second case 0 is a rational number so either we will get a rational number or irrational number same is the case of subtraction if we subtract root 2 minus root 2 we will get 0 which is an rational number for multiplication also if we multiply root 2 into root 2 we get 2 which is a rational number and if we multiply root 2 with root 3 we get root 6 as the product which is an irrational number same is the case of division if we divide root 2 by root 3 we get root 2 by root 3 and if we divide root 2 by root 2 we get 1 as the quotient which is a rational number so in the case of uh, operations between two irrational number we will get either rational number or irrational number so we will get rational number or irrational number now let us discuss the operation between a rational number and a irrational number let us take the example of 2 plus root 3 here 2 is a rational number and root 3 is an irrational number so if we add this two number we will get 2 plus root 3 as a sum which is an irrational number same is the same in the case of subtraction 2 minus root 3 we get 2 minus root 3 as the difference which is also an irrational number for multiplication if we multiply 2 which is a rational number by root 3 which is an irrational number we will get 2 root 3 which is an irrational number same is the case of division if we divide 2 by root 3 we get 2 by root 3 as the quotient which is an irrational number so the so the operations between a rational number and an irrational number we will get a an irrational number so by observing this we can summarize such that the sum or difference of a rational number and irrational number is irrational and the product or the quotient of